video, we'll look at methods of updating Unix. Let's go ahead and open up our virtualization software. Or in case you're using a separate PC for Linux, go ahead and power on your Solaris or Linux Unix operating system. In our VirtualBox virtualization software, let's click on the CentOS Linux PC and click Start. In your case, if you're using a real PC, go ahead and press the power button. And we'll see the system booting the CentOS operating system. In later videos, we'll look at exactly what this text means and how it could be useful in troubleshooting or modifying your system. If we look down here, we'll see our virtual hard drive flashing. If this is a real PC, you'll probably have a LED or light emitting diode on the front of your PC flashing, indicating the hard drive is loading data. And here we're switching from the text to the graphical environment, seeing that it's starting networking. Let's go and hit cha show details in order to go back to a more Unix-like text startup sequence where it's listing each service it's starting and an OK on this right side indicated indicating if it was successfully started. And now we will go ahead and type in our username and password. And we should have a terminal here on the desktop or a terminal here. If not, you may find it in Applications, System, Accessories, sorry, Terminal. And you may right click and add to the launcher. Now, let's go ahead and click on the terminal window to open a terminal. Let's make it a little smaller. Now notice on the right side, a uh, dialog box is showing updates available. There are 39 package updates. And if I click View Updates, it should launch an interface showing me the different packages available. And if I hit the Apply Updates button here, it should go ahead and start the installation of these packages. Now this is very Windows-like and the whole point of us learning Unix is to learn the command line method. So I'm going to go ahead and quit out of this. And let's look at the terminal method, which is the preferred method in Unix since not all Unix systems has a graphical user interface, as well as the fact that a lot of times we're connecting remotely over the internet without a graphical user interface. Now, there's a program called yum, a program called apt, and depending on what version of Unix or type of Unix you're using, you might use another program called pkg for Solaris, and so on. The default one in CentOS is yum. Now let me show you another command, which, which ls. This tells us if we have a program. If I say which roger, roger is obviously not a program, so it should return nothing. And basically it gives us a list of places it looked on the operating system to find the program roger. Let's go ahead and clear this. We'll look at that in more detail later. If I say which yum, it shows me that there is a yum in this location, user bin yum. Let me say yum update. 
and notice what's happening. It says all these packages are updated, set to be updated, set to be updated. And then it's asking me after it displays the summary if 213 megabytes is okay for the updates. And I'll go ahead and say yes and hit enter. And we have the installation of the update started. First, it downloads the packages. There's a package called Yelp, one called Cups, one called Free Type. And this now, these numbers next to it is the version. Usually, we're not interested in the versions or the packages. These are packages that happen to be installed on the system already. If we were installing a program that had these as a prerequisite, then this information might be important. At this point, we just want to make sure, look at the, the size perhaps and the state, what percentage is installed. For the most part, I would just walk away and let this occur on its own. And at the end of the package installation, I should be ready to use my new operating system that has not, not only been installed, but updated with the latest versions available on the internet. Now in very rare circumstance, you might need to reboot after an install. And we'll talk about that in the future. And if you do need, need it, it will tell you. But most likely, you won't need to reinstall. Very un-Microsoft-like. And so while this is happening, we could go ahead and open a new terminal. Let's make it smaller. Smaller still. Let's move the virtual machine around. See how much time I have left. Two minutes on this video. So let me show you a couple more Unix commands. The where is command. I could say where is yum. And we see I typed where. That's not a command. So it says command not file. Where is yum. And it tells us there's yum files at these locations. So let's go ahead and close this. I just wanted to demo that we could do multiple things at a time. And so let's close this window and this window. And we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and let this finish installing for now. And that's the end of this update video. Just remember for CentOS Linux, the update command is yum. And alternatively, if you have a graphical interface, you could go ahead and use this icon on the top right.